Here we are on a cold, dreary, low-vis day, getting ready to depart into icing conditions. And I'm going to be showing how to do the ice protection checks on a Citation Ultra. In this case, uh, we could be doing these uh, ice protection checks on the taxi out, but in order to shoot this video, uh, I've pulled into the run-up area and uh, we're stopped with the parking brake on. With the engines at 75% N2, or close to it, we're going to turn the engine ice protection switches into the up position, the on position for the left hand and right hand switches. And when we do that, we're going to see the engine anti-ice enunciators turn on to show that the system has not met those three conditions yet of the uh, of the uh, engine nacelles being up to the correct temperature, that's in this airplane 220 degrees. Uh, the inboard section of the wing roots need to come up to 300 degrees. And the valve that controls bleed air to the stator veins uh, has to be open. Those are the three conditions that will uh, get the ice engine anti-ice switches to, uh, or engine anti-ice enunciator to extinguish. So uh, we're going to wait for that to, to uh, meet those three conditions for everything to warm up. And I also want to show how on the N1 gauges and the ITT gauge, we can see a reaction when we turn those switches on and off because if that if those valves are opening and redirecting bleed air to the correct uh, locations, we should see a drop in the N1 and a rise in the ITT as bleed air is diverted. So I'm gonna turn both ice protection switches off for a minute. So now they're off. And now when I turn the left hand switch on, we're gonna see a drop in, uh, we're gonna see a drop in the left hand ITT, or I'm sorry, a rise in the left hand ITT and a drop in the left hand N1. There's the drop in the N1 and the rise in ITT. Now we'll see the same on the right hand side when I move the right hand uh, engine anti switch on. See a drop in ITT. I'm sorry, I keep saying that wrong. A rise in ITT and a drop in N1. That shows that the bleed air is being taken off and diverted into the, into the systems correctly. And then up here, we can see that the engine anti ice enunciators have extinguished, meaning that all three of those conditions have been met. With the engine still powered up, uh, we're going to check the boots to make sure that the boots will inflate correctly. So we're going to take this spring-loaded switch for the surface uh, ice protection, which is the wing boots, and we're going to move it up into the surface auto position, and then it spring loads back to off. When we do that, we can look back at the wings and uh, I'm not sure how well it's going to show up in the video, but we'll see that the upper or the uh, lower surfaces blow first on the main wings, and then it'll be six seconds of sucking those boots back down, and then six seconds of inflating the upper surfaces on the main wings. And we're unable to see the tail. We have to trust that uh, the tail is inflating and deflating correctly as well. And when we blow that, I'm going to blow it one more time here with the uh, view of the enunciator panel. We'll see the surface de-ice enunciator light illuminate. And that shows that that timer is cycling the boots correctly. It's all on that 18-second uh, cycle with six seconds um, between each cycle, inflating and deflating the boots. If we needed to manually blow the boots, we could hold the, the switch down in the manual position and it would override that timer and it would just keep inflating the boots uh, until we let go of the switch and then I'm going to let go of the switch and it stops inflating the boots.